Welcome back to part two of my what is the internet video um, or videos, I should say. And we talked about what is the internet on more of a technical level, but I wanted to do this video separately of the history of the internet so you get an idea of the how and the why it came to be in the first place. So in order to do that, let's jump in our little handy dandy time machine and go back to the 1960s. Yes, all the way back to the 1960s. Cause back then you had rooms full of computers, which was pretty much like giant glorified calculators. And you also had the fact that this is happening in the cold war era. So people are constantly living in fear of nuclear bombs, like a nuclear attack from Russia specifically. So the, the first whisper of of what we now know the internet to be came out in 1962. I believe the paper was authored by someone named JCR Licklitter is who they went by. And Licklitter was like, hey, it's cool that we have these rooms full of computers. Wouldn't it be amazing if they could communicate with each other, the, you know, network with each other, essentially. So that was 62, table that thought for about seven years. And then finally, in 1969, October of 1969, the first message was actually sent between two computers. It was incomplete. I mean, like it didn't even totally make it all the way from what I understand, but at least they sent it in 1969 via ARPANET, um, Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. Advanced Research Project Projects Agency Network. Kind of a mouthful, but ARPANET, which was, you know, originally a government project and it was mainly designed for government and research institutes to use. Um, and that's when the first internet message was sent. One of the incentives that the government had to really having ARPANET become developed is because again, in the Cold War time, people are afraid of getting nuclear bombed. So if the government and a lot of our top research institutions in the United States house most of their valuable data in one or two locations, like let's say um, somewhere, you know, a giant computer networks or a giant computer system in Virginia, and then maybe they had one redundancy because it's expensive at that time to invest in all this ability to process and, and house data. So let's say they had one more backup um, in New York, but then you get nuclear bombed and that that one the of one if not maybe two sources of failure that makes you really vulnerable that makes all that valuable data and research that you've done really vulnerable so arpanet had that much more incentive to try and decentralize the internet i mean the the very extrapolated version of this is cloud computing where you have many many data centers all throughout the world that are constantly migrating the same data in order to keep it safe it's in the cloud so this is this is the primitive primordial pool of that if you will um and so specifically in october of 1969 the first two computers that were members of arpanet that actually sent that incomplete message was one in ucla and then the other one um, was sri the stanford research institute computer so those are the first two like that was the the first foray into computer networking which was really exciting um, and then there was a lot developed thereafter like file transfer was obviously the first and foremost priority for ARPANET, being able to transfer data files. So FTP was the big priority for a lot of the developers. And then Ray Tomlinson, who was one of the founding pioneers of ARPANET and did a lot with the file transfer stuff in 1971. So a couple of years after that first message got sent, he sent himself the first piece of electronic mail or as we know it, email. So all the way back in 71, they're technically starting to send emails, which was really exciting. And then at the same time, around the same time in 1971, some of the earliest days of the internet across the pond, so to speak, there is a gentleman by the name of Vinton Cerf who developed TCP and an IP, like Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol, which we still use to this day. So all the way back in the early 1970s, TCP was being developed. And we still use TCP. You still use TCP all the time. And I'm very thankful that in the earliest days, it was a protocol that got adopted by not just just Europe at the time, but a lot of the foundational people that were using any type of internet technology, any type of networking technology, or else I think the internet as it built out on a global scale would have been that much clunkier if Europe was using TCP, transmission control protocol, but the United States and maybe some other continents were using different transmission control or different types of con transmission control protocols. 
So that was that was a very important piece to the early internet puzzle as well was TCP. And you had a lot going on between government and research institutions for the first, what, 20 years. And then eventually somebody, not just anybody, <laughs> but um, Sir Tim Berners-Lee specifically at CERN Labs, he was knighted because of his epic contribution to the internet. Tim Berners-Lee was like, okay, we have, we have this this really neat system that's able to transmit this data, but only people who are basically computer programmers know how to use it because it's it's very technical in how all these messages are sent and how you are able to read them. It's not readily human readable. It's not your your average, you know, like image file that shows up. It's not your average text that shows up. It's it's you need to be a computer programmer to use it. And that's not cool. So that's when Tim Berners Lee went hard on HTML, hypertext markup language, which is to this day, this is again back in the 1990s, he was doing this, but we still use HTML to this day in order to transmit HTML, he came up with HTTP, which as you guys know, when you're typing in a website in order to get routed to different websites, you're still using HTTP, hypertext transfer, transport protocol in order to get routed to those websites. So a lot of these early early developments like still hold true to the internet to this day but again um hypertext mar html hypertext markup language is the language that your computer uses to take all of the data and image and video files and make it human readable like at readily readable for your average person on a web page and that again is the foundation of the internet as we know it today like the public internet uh, and again, HTTP is how HTML pages are routed. And I think something else to note is that this is what finally made the internet the World Wide Web. You went from art, just ARPANET to now you have the World Wide Web, again, as we know it today. But you have, okay, so now you have these, these companies and these individuals building websites in HTML and being able to send it, but, but how do they find each other? So the public internet was finally released, the World Wide Web, in 1991. So by 1992, people are building pages in a company called called Erwise decided to make the first GUI friendly like graphical user interface like um, normal user friendly uh, web browser system so that way you could easily find where you're supposed to be going. So Erwise was the first to be a web browser for the new World Wide Web and then a year after that Mosaic came out and then a uh, year after that, so 1994, you finally get Netscape Navigator. And I'm sure a lot of you that were around in the early days of the internet, Netscape Navigator was definitely like the biggest one on the scene for a while. Everything else is just kind of built out from there. And I think the last little fact is a question. I wanna see if you can guess at least close to the right answer of when the first cell phone was actually able to access the internet. So what what year was it that the first cell phone was able to access the internet? I'll give you a few seconds to, to ponder it over. And the answer, 1996. So back in 1996 is when Nokia of Finland, again, like some of the, the earliest, most popular cell phones were Nokia's. Um, back when in the day when you could play Snake, that was like the only game available. But yeah, Nokia, Finland in 1996 had the first phone that was able to access the internet. However, at the time, go figure, it was prohibitively expensive, so it didn't really take off back in 96, but it was possible back then. So yeah, everything else, you know, the, I mean, you could build out such an impressive timeline and I'm sure YouTube and the internet in general has some really cool like milestones, like a timeline of milestones of the internet. But those were some of the biggest ones in my opinion that make the internet what it is today and where it came from, its history. And I will also link the video that it does a little bit more of like the technical explanation of like what the internet is in terms of how, you know, a picture or a video or a data file that you're sending gets routed around the world or on the internet. So take care and I hope this was helpful.